Welcome to episode 18 of Friends and Film, a podcast where we talk about the latest movie news and theatrical releases. I'm your host, Cooper Hood, at Coops underscore Hoops on Twitter, and as always, I'm joined by my host, Josh Straley, at Straley Strong on Twitter. If you've not done so already and are new to the show, you can follow or subscribe to us um, on Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube by simply searching Friends and Film. Josh, what's up? Dude, I have been listening to Views by Drake's new <laughs> album this entire last two days, and it is one of the best albums I've listened to all year. Really? I've I've not listened to anything from it. Like, not honestly. a single track? Uh-uh. Not even, like, Hotline Bling from the radio? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I thought that was, like, so long ago. It was oh, included. it was so long ago. I can't believe you've included, included it on the album. Okay, but. well, then, yeah, I have heard that one song. Okay, well, <laughs> think that only just spread across 19 other tracks. Jeez. It's good. What's been happening with you? Uh, nothing. Just, uh, you know, closing down the semester. Finals week is... Yeah, final week, man. Uh, this coming week. Um, so I'm really looking forward to being done with school. Um, Absolutely. Still taking a summer class um, and working and stuff, but... What's the summer be, class? It's uh, a... F- oh, shoot, which one is it? Uh, it's either... It's not a foreign it, language, it, is it? No, no Oh, thank way. goodness. It's either a film class or a... Um, visual communication class, which is just like photography and that stuff. That could be enjoyable. So, yeah, I'm expecting it to be pretty easy um, either way. So it shouldn't be too stressful. It's just another three credits I can knock out totally um, pretty easily. Um, but yeah, we uh, on today's episode, we are not going to be doing a review as we've normally done in the past. No. Um, so sorry if you're looking for one today, but we just didn't feel like going and seeing Keanu. Not oh, that it doesn't look it do- great. It looks adorable. I thought about going and seeing it just for fun um, the other day, but I was like, eh, I'm just going to stay home um, and watch some NBA playoffs, NFL draft. Um, My Miami Heat won yesterday. Dwayne D-Wade Wade came on in fire, clutch. man. Uh, purple shirt, man, can't stop anybody. <laughs> um, that was my favorite part of that whole night. And so hopefully by the time you guys are hearing this, the Heat have advanced to the second round. Um, if not, you can probably find me um, very upset in my basement um, <laughs> on Sunday afternoon. But on uh, today's episode, instead of the review, we're going to do a preview of Captain America's Civil War. Um, as for us, the movie will be out in six days. Um, but for you guys, it'll be out. Well, you guys could see it it's technically opening night in two days. So um, pretty exciting stuff. It's almost here. Um, it's been a long three weeks for me yeah. personally. <laughs> um, looking forward to getting back in the theater and seeing it again. And I'm sure you're looking forward to seeing it. I just, I, j- I just want to get this feeling of you knowing everything <laughs> behind us so yeah. I can like be on the same plane oh, as you. It is, it is so, I mean, it's, uh, it's great, but it's also tough at the same time. Uh, yeah. The best part has definitely been, I don't have to like worry about like, having things spoiled for me online except yeah. for the the second mid or post credit scene i i turned on my spoiler shields uh on tweet bot just Smart. on monday anything to do with spider-man civil war or so you haven't fighting? seen any of the tv spots no Good. i saw a screen cap of one but it looked like spider-man was punching somebody and i was like nope not even gonna yeah, go anywhere yeah, yeah don't <laughs> they've been they've been showing a little bit a little bit more spidey here and there i'm like stop <laughs> Like guys, don't don't watch these. Yeah, <laughs> whatever you can. Yeah, that's so, why you tweeted that. It's it's seriously, it, uh, he's so good. Um, and we'll talk about uh, a lot of different variations of Civil War. What we're excited to see, what we're uh, weary about, um, just kind of expectations in general. Um, what we think is going to happen uh, later on. But first, we're going to get to um, the news and what happened throughout the week. If you don't want to stick around for the news segment, we just want to hear us talk about Civil War and how excited we are to see it. Uh, you can skip ahead uh, through the podcast. If you're listening on, if you're watching on YouTube, there'll be a pop up on your screen right now. If you're um, on SoundCloud or iTunes, there will be a timestamp in the description as long as I remember to do so, uh, where you can skip to that mark and then you can. Uh, go to our preview there. Um, but we're going to start right now with the flyby, the segment we introduced uh, a couple weeks ago. Now we have a name for it uh, officially. Um, and we're going to start by talking about a story that we talked about last week as well, um, which was uh, Elizabeth Banks' costume for Power Rangers as Rita Repulsa. She was spotted on set um, on two different occasions throughout the week. Uh, once by Just Jared that showed more of the 
green outfit that we talked about uh, last week, as well as, um, again, with uh, YVR shoots, caught a couple of pictures of her in a black, um, very, very um, like kind of torn apart, revealing um, uh, suit. Ooh. So, it, I mean, I don't know. It looks kind of risque <laughs> for, for, a Power a Rangers pa- movie. for a Power Rangers movie. You got to think that the rating on this was like supposed to be like PG, but I would, I would, they were probably PG-13? always targeting PG thirteen. I would huh. think that but. sounds sketchy. But yeah, the the first set of series of images you were talking about, serious Loki vibes. Yeah, like she's even got a spear that looks exactly like the uh, magic glow stick of destiny or whatever <laughs> its name is. Does it have a name? The spear? I think it's it's just Loki's staff. That's what yeah, it's referred okay. to as. Um, yeah, I, I liked uh, both sets of pictures. There's a little you could see like her veins were kind of turning green in places um, on her body, which I thought was kind of weird. It kind of gave me like a like a tree root vibe that she was yeah like I don't know somehow like hmm. infected with something. So uh, maybe those older pictures uh, with her in like the black uh, the black suit is kind of more of her original stuff. Um, and then when she uses the staff, she can you know kind of similar to Loki, he can manifest armor onto himself. She can, um, put on this other, hmm. uh, uniform basically. I, I'm just, I just, I need to see the power Rangers now. Yeah. I want to see what route they're going to take this. Yeah. Cause I think filming for this is almost done. So it's surprising. I haven't seen anything of what the suits or their, uh, giant robots or whatever look like. Oh, I um, hope there's giant robots. Oh, I mean, there has to be, it's power Rangers. Exactly. Um, so that's exciting. Um, and then uh, we got we seems like we keep getting news about Blade Runner too. Um, it's for the past like three weeks, we've been talking about it. Um, and they added another cast member with the rap reporting that uh, Sylvia Hoax has joined the uh, the film as a female lead, and that she could potential that sure her role be kind of smaller, like a small lead in this one, but that she'll have a larger role if the film does well in another Blade Runner movie in the future. Dude, the Blade Runner trilogy 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 sounds <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I mean, sorry, I got tongue tied. Especially if uh, if the director can stay on board, uh, mm-hmm. that would be that would be great. Um, and we'll we'll see how this uh, this movie plays out. I keep getting more and more excited for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I Me believe too. It, I believe it comes out next year. Yeah, it's so, a long way time to wait. But. Uh, 2017 just keeps getting Heck yeah. <laughs> more and more exciting uh, as a year for film. Um, and then uh, a somewhat serious story um, that's also sad um, is that uh, Blade Runner: The Death Cure, the third installment in the franchise is probably not going to hit its... Maze Runner. Uh, Maze Runner. What did I say? You said Blade Runner. Blade, oh, wow. Sorry. There's too many Runner franchises. Uh, exactly. Um, yeah, Maze Runner, The Death Cure will probably not hit its uh, 2017 yeah, release late, date. I think it's uh, late 2017. Yeah, it's like March. I know it's in March. It's another part of the year. Either 2017 or 2018. I'm pretty sure it's 2017. Um, either way, it's not going to hit that due date most likely because they've had to shut down production entirely because a couple months ago, Dylan O'Brien was injured on set um, doing a stunt, and they were hopeful that he'd be able to return in about a month or two, but now the he's still not healthy, and they can't film with Adam, so that's been a big um, pushback in their schedule. Um, this is all reported by The Hollywood Reporter, and hopefully he can get better. Um, I've, I've liked both of the previous Maze Runner movies, um, and I was, you know, Looking forward to seeing what they would do with a third one. So yeah, it's awful to hear about anybody getting injured on set, and it sounds like this was kind of serious, a little bit serious. I mean, it sounds like he shattered his some one of his yeah, bones yeah, like in the face. He had facial uh, damage. I think he might have fractured his pelvis or something. Oh, so that's awful. Um, definitely not um, great. But I mean, this is kind of, this is the cost of Hollywood when you when you know, want to do stunts and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Hopefully he gets better um, as quickly as possible and they can continue filming. Um, we just wanted to talk about that. And then another not great bit of information is Fox is not going to be attending um, Comic-Con this year, San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, the rap reported this, that they're leaving Hall H, where they had normally presented alongside you know, the likes of DC and Warner Brothers um, and then Disney and Marvel Studios. They're not going to join um, the party this year because last year they had so much uh, footage rele- uh, footage leaked from their presentations. Oh, yeah. So 
because they don't want to show early stuff that gets leaked and then gets bad impressions, they're not going to come back this year. That's the dumbest excuse I've ever heard for pulling out of a conference. Isn't yeah. it? I mean, I don't know. I understand it. I mean, because there, it's a difficult situation where you go and you spend all this, you know, this time and money for to go and show fans that pay to see this stuff early. You show them, hey, we appreciate you guys spending all this money for coming out here and seeing us. Here's some early concept work for what we're doing. Um, but then one loser videotapes it in low definition. It gets leaked online, and then. People are complaining, oh, Apocalypse? That's Apocalypse? He looks so weird. Uh, it's like, I'm not on board for this movie. Well, I, I, I guess I get that, but it, it, leaving, the, leaving the entire event because you don't like the idea of someone dropping some footage stolen from your, not stolen, but filmed off of your event, it's just, I don't know, it seems kind of juvenile. To say, well, if we if it can't be 100% our way, then it, no one's going to have any of it at all. Well, and I think this is also, um, in large part, uh, a reaction to, you know, Disney was not there last year um, because of D23. Right, their and own conference. They had their own conference. There was There's rumors that they'll be there this year, but after this, they're kind of wanting to know. We might pull out two, same with Sony. Um, maybe Warner Brothers will pull out. We don't really know. But I think more, I mean... Disney at D23 showed the first Civil War footage ever. Doctor Strange concept art. None of that's gotten out. They showed uh, Peach Dragon. They showed Finding Dory. They showed anything on their upcoming slate that they could show. They showed a D23 to a larger audience than that's at that that, that is in Hall H at uh, Comic Con, and nothing leaked. Nothing came out. They brought all. They bought a bunch of press there. Like you guys can tweet about it. No pictures. No videos. They collected phones for everybody. That's all the presentation. And I think more and more students will follow that path that Disney's doing and be like, okay, Comic-Con, you're great. Thank you for, you know, being this service to us for the last couple of years. But we can we can have our own, you know, Comic-Con basically with just Fox stuff or just DC stuff where mm -hmm. instead of – because the thing that always was kind of puzzling to me um, was that Hall H was always on one day where you'd go – DC, Marvel, Fox, Sony, in some order, oh, yeah, those four a, would all go in a row. And yeah, then it's, it's like that that day, just like there's so much news that everything just gets, it's a competition to see, okay, who can who can have the last the longest lasting headline? Yeah, you want to be able to make your mark and overshadow anyone else's publicity. Yeah, but like if they, if these companies go and have their own presentations, then they can control the news for a week totally. because of just how much excitement. I mean, look what happened when Marvel didn't announce their lineup at Comic-Con. They went to the El Capitan Theater and they did their whole phase three lineup. They brought out Chadwick Boseman. They announced Civil War. Totally. And then that was all anybody talked about for a week was just, just that. Yeah, but they're, but let's see, like, why not just say that? Why not just say we'd rather hold our own events and not be at Comic-Con than say, well, we don't want to go because you, your fans are terrible. Well, cause I think that's it, basically what it was. I think it's still that's still a factor for them, though, because, I mean, Fox has had bad experiences in the past. A lot of studios have with no. Comic-Con security is not the best. Um, and no matter what kind of <laughs> stuff they do, stuff keeps getting leaked. The one thing I find very interesting about this from Fox perspective is Deadpool this past year was greenlit because of a leak. Yeah. <laughs> so their most successful X-Men movie I, was greenlit because of a leak. So that part I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. But that, was a, that was a coordinated leak. Though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so they wanted people to see that. Totally. Um, I just, I just, the, when I read, when I read, when I read the headline and I read their, re, their stated reason for leaving, I just, I mean, I, I just felt like it was less, sort of like them being a little bit juvenile about the whole thing. But I understand the business side of holding your own event. Yeah. So. So we'll have to see uh, who all, you know, stays at Comic-Con, who doesn't. Um, so far, it's just uh, Fox that has officially announced that they're not going to be there uh, this year. Um, so we will see, um, but that is the end of our flyby, um, and we're going to now go into our main news segment, and to kick it off, we're going to talk about one of Josh's most anticipated movies Ooh, of yes. the year, his second most anticipated movie um, of 2016, got its first trailer, A great Snowden. One. Yes. Talk about it. Okay, well, th first things first, yeah. Joseph L Gordon Levitt's 
accent voice characterization of Edward Snowden, the NSA um, leaker uh, whistleblower that this movie is based around, is perfect. He sounds it sounds just like him. And throughout the entire thing, I was just laughing because I was like, "How did he get this so so right?" <laughs> and this the movie is no laughing matter. Like no. this is this is a huge. This is this is probably one of the most important movies that's coming out this year for mm. like just that people need to go see and learn about. Yeah. Uh, and everything about it was just awesome. Mm-hmm. It, the the dude's story is great. Like. Was there anything in there? Like, did you know that he like was used to be in the military uh, before he signed I did, on? I did not know that part, um, but I knew kind of the overarching story um, about him. Yeah. Um, kind of hearing you talk about, you know, how it's, it's such an important movie for people to see. I think it will kind of have a similar impact um, as The Big Short did last Absol- year. Yes. Um, where people go and see in their, or like, or even um, Spotlight. Definitely. Um, maybe to a lesser degree in the spotlight because spotlight sure. is such a heavy subject. Um, yeah, and it's eight years in the past, but it's something relevant, though. Yeah, but like, yeah, I mean, people kind of, you know, you, you hear, oh, you know, the government's listening uh, right. and stuff and they're spying on you, but you don't really understand fully, like, what all that actually means. Um, and I think a movie, I mean, movies are so big nowadays mm-hmm. and something like this starring just Gordon Levitt um, could be a great way for people just to understand what's exactly um, happening in the world. Yeah. So like when you saw the big short, like you came up, you came up to me like the, the, to the or the day we were going to record and you're like, dude, it was, it was crazy. And then at the end of it, it tells you that they started selling basically the same thing yeah. again. And you're like, and like, that's, that's what these movies can do. Uh, and it's just, I think it, Gordon looks awesome. Mm-hmm. The plot looks like it's going to be thrilling enough that people will go see it. Uh, so Oh yeah, it looked really good. I'm yeah, excited. Yeah, it was, it was super suspenseful. And I was like, I was engaged the whole time. The only part I was kind of like, what was when Nick Cage popped in for like one second. Oh, I was yeah. like, I was yeah. like, Nick, Nick those cages in this movie. That's the um, one dark cloud. Yeah, but then uh, I really like Zachary Quinto. So hopefully he has a bigger role than just He's being like a, Edward Snowden's best friend. Yeah, okay, so. good. Uh, and then uh, I'm glad to see Shailene Woodley in something other than Divergent movies. Yeah. Um. So, um, big fan of hers. So, uh, yeah, I've. This movie definitely, uh, this trailer got me way more excited for the movie than I was uh, do you think, prior. Do you think it gets closer to your top 10? Oh, well, I don't, I don't, ad- I, if, mm, if we could adjust them now, normally I try to, st- I, once sure. I, once I say it, then I don't rearrange it just cause okay. you go off what you know at the time. Um, but like if I had to make a list of, you know, top 10 most tested movies of the rest of the year, mm-hmm. it could be near cool. there. Um, I'd have to. I'll take look. that as a victory. Um, but one other movie that I'm really looking forward to now is uh, the Tomb Raider reboot because uh, it was officially announced that Alicia Vikander has landed the role as Laura Croft. Um, so she will be. She just won the Oscar for Best mm-hmm. Supporting Actress. Uh, was it, yeah, it was Best Supporting, right? Yes. Yes. Yep. Best Supporting Actress um, for Danish Girl. Um, she killed it in Ex Machina last year. Same with Man Man from Uncle. Um, so she'll be starring in the Tomb Raider reboot directed by Roar, uh, Roar Uthog um, and is currently without a release date, but I'm sure they're kind of fast-tracking this to uh, build off of the momentum around Vikander right well, now. Well, yeah, definitely. And now that they're not, they're not picking somebody who's got projects, you know, to do until the, for the next five and a half years, like we thought they're going to have to do with Daisy <laughs> like Ridley. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely, it definitely means that Vikander is going to have time to put some, Definitely, some huge river who put her talents and the effort into this role that I think it needs to be yeah. successful. And I think it's kind of interesting that, like, the other name we'd heard a lot was Daisy Ridley for this role, and they're kind of on like opposite career trajectories almost. Where uh, Daisy starts off this mega franchise, and mm-hmm. now she's been kind of announcing these smaller, more um, indie projects, indie yeah. projects where she can actually we can she can showcase more of her acting ability but i mean she does that plenty in star wars sure. but more than just in an action role whereas um, vikander she starts off in all these kind of smaller indie movies mm-hmm. becomes more and more of a well-known name gets a little more actiony in man from uncle maybe she can do some of that in jason bourne um and now she's going to lead her own franchise so i'm really excited that she gets this chance um big fan of hers um she stole the movie um ex machina uh for me so 
Yeah, uh, just up to Warner now not to screw the pooch on the movie. Yeah. That's which, the big thing. Uh, Roar Uthog as director, I'm not familiar with him. Me neither. Um, so we'll see what he can do with it. Um, he's not a first-time director. He's directed stuff in the past, but there's nothing I've seen. Sure. Um, so we will see. Um, hopefully this movie's great. Uh, I think I'll like it. Almost regard, at least I'll like it. I'll like Alicia, I'm sure. Yeah. The rest of the movie, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. It just it With her in the role, I think that almost states that they're going to take this from a more humane aspect than mm-hmm. just tossing someone in short shorts and giving them two guns and shooting up the place. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, So. Um, and now we're going to talk about uh, one Star Wars story um, that could be possible spoilers um, included. We talked about it a long time ago um, on our third episode of the podcast, the initial rumor, um, and that rumor has now been confirmed as – give you like two seconds to go away for spoilers – because Maz Mickelson was talking to Sky News and he was asked about, you know, what it was like joining Rogue One. He was like, oh, I was I was afraid to join it and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he said, Felicity is playing this lovely, strong woman and I played her father. So there we go. <laughs> and then he was like, I uh, probably should he, have he's that. like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Shh, that was too much. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he knew he kind of slipped up there, but um, I'm. I'm for this. Yeah, I mean, it matches the rumor that we uh, heard back in February. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Uh, that he would be her daughter and has connections to the Death Star. And that's just, can we say that too again? Okay, but yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's a good that's a good pairing, and I think it creates a little bit of tension. Everyone in the Star Wars universe seems to be related. <laughs> still, <laughs> well, see, but... I think I think this kind of this even further squashes those rumors. It's like. They're not going to make Maz connected to Felicity and then Felicity connected to Daisy. Like, sure. They're not going to keep connecting all these people together together. Mm-hmm. At least I hope not. <laughs> I mean, right. I haven't read any scripts, so I have no idea. No, I haven't either. Um, but I, I'm excited to see Maz not play a bad guy. I mean, he's, yeah. I mean, from all, he might start off as kind of a bad guy because he's working for the Empire, but then he turns and he's like, hey, Felicity, uh, Help me out. <laughs> right. Because they're doing some bad stuff over here that can mm-hmm. kill everybody. And she's like, all right. So. I may have created a weapon that could destroy yeah. worlds, but. And you may die in the process of helping <laughs> me, but, you know, come on. Let's get I'm to it. I'm your father. Uh, so that's that's interesting. Um, yeah. That's, we don't really know anything else about the plot of this movie, really, no. at this point. Um, Just the, and the plans for the Death Star. I was hoping we'd have a trailer um, by next week with. Civil War. I mean, it still could happen. But we do have a trailer, don't we? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we do. Ninety seconds of it. I uh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I was <laughs> wow. I we totally, talked for a half hour. I totally two weeks ago about. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what just happened. And that um, is slated for a December eighteenth release, right? Something um, something like that. Yeah, this year. Yep. Um, speaking of release dates, uh, Disney has landed, or they've staked their claim in five more release dates um, up to twenty nineteen. For fairy tale live action movies, um, one in 2017, July 28, 2017, April 6, 2018, April or August 3rd, 2018, December 25th, 2018, and December 20th, 2019. Um, the three of them are rumored to be fairy tale movies. The other two are supposed to be live action. Um, so my guess is, is Cruella starring Emma Stone will be one of those uh, fairy tale movies, probably. Closest one, probably the 2017. Beauty and the Beast is uh That's already dated. It's yeah. already been dated? Mm-hmm. Okay. Shoot, I uh, missed that. I, I believe so. I think it's coming out sometime next year because it's already filmed and everything. It might, I don't know if it's wrapped, but it's definitely uh, in progress. Um, and then uh, Maleficent 2 with Angelina Jolie will probably take one of the other fairy tale dates. Um, same with, I could see that the last uh, 2019 release date is slated to be a fairy tale movie. Um, so I could see the Tinkerbell movie with Reese Witherspoon. Oh yeah, um, being that one because we haven't heard anything about that. Um, no, was, just that who's was, she's writing and who's attached. Yeah, so then the live action movies I could Jungle Book two will definitely be one of those. Um, probably the August third, twenty eighteen uh, release date if I had to guess. And then the other one, I don't know. Dumbo with Tim Burton, maybe. Yeah, that's that's the one that always caught me off guard. If 
Tim Burton doing a Dumbo movie, what does that look yeah, like? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I I'm automatically equate the. Did he, he he did the Alice in Wonderland, the first one, right? Uh, I can't remember if he actually directed it or not. He's he at least, he at least it? produced it. He's yeah. producing this new one as well. Um, the other one I could see is the Emily Blunt Mary Poppins movie because oh, it's I am excited. It's for that. Christmas Day. That other release day. So that sounds like you, a Christmas Day movie, yeah. doesn't it? That just kind of screams family. Yeah, family. Take everybody to go see it. Make a lot of money from it. Mm-hmm. Um, are you excited for more? You know, live action fairy tale yeah, movies like, and stuff. Uh, the, the Maleficent, one that got super mixed reviews. Uh, I thought that was pretty good. Like, I loved seeing Angelina Jolie in the role. It deviated from the plot you thought you were getting, yeah. which is what I think these movies have to do to keep you like. Excited, not excited, but keep you like from saying like, oh, it's, it's the same as the cartoon. So uh, I'm excited to see the Beauty and the Beast and Mary Poppins. Those are the two that I really want to uh, get to get to take a look at. Peach Dragon. I mean, we've already got a date for that, but yeah. I'm just thinking in the same vein. Like, I'm interested to see where they take that new one, mm-hmm. uh, Jungle Book Two, obviously. So it'll be exciting. Yeah, and then I saw one of the Screen Rant writers. Um, speculated that the 2019 December 20 2019 release date um, is won't actually have either, any of these movies attached and it's actually just a placeholder for Star Wars 9 no, that sounds um, right. which I think I was like I never thought about that but I'm like 99% sure now that's actually what will happen yeah well because they wanted to get episode 8 in in May remember and then when they mm-hmm. pushed the release date to December you almost got the sense that, that they wanted to have yeah a it just feels like it's okay every six months yeah Star Wars, it's like it's just December is Star Wars month yeah. from for the next that's what twenty I want. years. That's what I want. I mean, sure, it'd be great seeing a Star Wars movie every six months, but <laughs> at the, the same time, it's like wow, that's that's a pretty big overkill. Yeah, you'd have to like really expand the mythology besides from just a Skywalker story. Yeah, and I think it hurts merchandising too because Star Wars is built around merchandising. Yeah, a, a lot of it is. And if you do one every year, you can crank out those Hasbro toys yeah. that break. It would be like, um, like I like I bought the Star Wars uh, Force Awakens DVD. When I, if, when I bought that this year, if they were having Rogue One come out in the same time period six months later, it'd be mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, Rogue One comes out in a month. <laughs> it's like, yeah. wait, what? <laughs> you need some time for build. Yeah. Um, so I think it gives them a lot of time to you know let because Star Wars is just so popular. It gives them time to launch this, launch their movies, have people. You'll see it multiple times in theaters. Calm down, buy it, watch it a bunch more times. Then and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, we have another one coming out in six months from now. That's great." <laughs> yeah. So I just think they have a really solid um, schedule by doing it once a year. Definitely. But I could totally see in the next two years just being like, "Listen, these movies are so popular. We have to keep. Mm-hmm. We just have to make more that's, and more." That's my fear. But at that point, you have to, like like I said, you just have to do more than they said they want to do. The um, the main stories be focused on the Skywalker family. If you're doing two movies a year, unless you're doing a ton of anthology movies, you have to expand that universe um, to do, you know, trilogies and long stories um, outside of the Skywalkers. It'll be, it'll be interesting. Yeah. It's, it'll be interesting to see what's happening. Yeah. I, I like, I like the idea of doing movies and trilogies. Yeah. So I'm still hoping for the Obi-Wan trilogy with you mcgregor i want to see him return to do a disney come capacity. on everybody wants it um and and speaking of an actor that could return to a franchise to um, a trilogy again yeah rob Downey jr has previously been very uh close-minded about returning for a fourth iron Man movie simply because uh of the toll it takes on him um not because it's not like he doesn't make massive amounts of money mm-hmm. <laughs> making these movies. Oh, what was his um, last number? Like 42 million. Yeah. Or something, something like that. Like that. Um, but in talking to ABC nightline, Downey said he could see himself do another Iron Man movie. What? So all of a sudden speculations running rampant <laughs> online about, you know, when could this movie happen? Where could it happen? Yeah. Um, it's not happening anytime soon. That's for sure. They've already got all their movies <laughs> slated <laughs> till 2019. They're not going to, bump any of these other movies and push no, the already, back farther enough. Yeah. They've um, been moving things around left and right. Yeah. So it could, maybe it'll take that in human slot. Now that Inhumans humans is gone. Um, I don't know if we see Iron Man four, it's definitely not till phase four, um, mm-hmm. but I would be excited to see them do it, especially if it was the real Mandarin and they make up a little bit for Iron Man three and give us 
the actual Mandarin. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of them doing a fourth one, but it can't, it has to be about something. It has to be passing the torch Mm -hmm. because clearly Downey Jr. is done with the, he's, he's, he, he seems like he's done uh, after infinity wars. So if they do an Iron Man four and he passes the torch, his character dies or whatever the case may be. uh, I think that's a way to get him out of the, I think it'd be like the way to get him out of the franchise. Yeah. Instead of just doing a retirement type of a deal. Yeah. But yeah. I don't want to see him die. I don't want to I don't want to think about it, but so, yeah. I would I could see something where in the neck by the end of phase three, Nick Fury's gone. And then phase four and throughout the rest of the time Downey wants to play Stark, it's him as the leader of Shield. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. so that means Age of the Shield's gone as a TV show. By that point they'd be in the like seventh season or something. Mm-hmm. So they would have definitely run the course of way longer than most people most people thought. Um yeah, I think it could be depend I mean it all depends. We'd have no idea how phase three ends. If he's even gonna make it out of phase three. Sure. Um There's a lot but lots gonna happen. Yeah. I I would I would definitely be there opening night for Iron Man Four, regardless of anything that was definitely. announced. Um uh, and we're gonna stick with comic movies because there was uh, a lot of comic movie news uh, yeah. regarding Fox, and then their X Men franchise. Most recently, DC just like kind of floodgates open on that yeah, universe. That's um, sad to talk about. And yeah, we'll we have to talk about you know both of them. Um, and we'll start with the positive stuff. Um, yeah, X Men Apocalypse got its final trailer. It looked good, right? Yeah, I, I it was it was the, my favorite trailer. I think um, yes. of the three they've released. Uh, my favorite moment um, was not even the ending of the trailer with the Wolverine claw mm-hmm. popping out. It was when Storm and Cyclops are kind of going back and forth, and it's just them and like the stare off basically, yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, uh, like that. It was just visually, it was very cool. Um, the one thing I I can't figure out is what they're doing with Oscar Isaac's voice. Because in each trailer it sounds yeah, different. Yeah, absolutely. Because there was the because it's line where it's uh, uh, what is what's his line? That well, they keep, rebuild the world yeah. and make a new, better, yeah, better one. It will make a better one. It's like they just keep doing that line over and over. And each time it sounds different. This one there's like a reverb echo mm-hmm. attached to it. I was like, what? It it's the first time I ever heard it. Like there's no way I could have tell, told myself it was Oscar Isaac. Yeah. And then it was the second trailer where he's ta- he's finally talking. And I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, that's Oscar Isaac. This mm-hmm. one, I'm like, that sounds like uh, Morgan Freeman <laughs> mixed with a little bit of uh, Ian McKellen. So I'm not sure yeah, what's it was, going on. It was very on. weird. So I don't I don't know. It's weird they keep changing his voice each trailer. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what the final voice is going to sound like. I hope it's not like this last trailer because I, wasn't, I just didn't like how it was like, I feel like he was in like a huge auditorium yeah. shouting and just kept echoing back to him sure. <laughs> with every line he said. But the trailer overall I thought was really uh, good and mm-hmm. it definitely has made me the most excited I have been for uh, this movie. It really turned I, – I, th- something I thought was interesting was it turned Jennifer Lawrence's character into – like the narrator of the movie like yeah. this is going to be kind of following it from her from her per, her perspective yeah and from the looks of it, it looks like uh xavier gets like kidnapped early on in the movie or something yeah. and that's why mystique is kind of thrown into the leadership role and they're like listen like we know you don't want to do this but the kids like you they respect you right would we, we need you to yeah, do this k- otherwise the world's screwed definitely um, type of thing um and speaking of the ending um, with the Wolverine Claws, personally, I did not want to see that. Um, nah, I thought it was all right. I just was like, honestly, when it happened, I kind of, I laughed. I won't lie. Just <laughs> really? because I was like, I was like, why? No, because now I want to see the movie. <laughs> I was I was sold before. I was I was not. I was going to see this movie regardless. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, but like, right? Then this trailer leading up, I was I was all for it, and then they showed the claws, and I was like. It's like just once. No, see that gets that. See, I, just once. <laughs> I had the opposite reaction. Do something without Hugh Jackman in the trailer. Like, oh, you can have him in the movie. I'll be fine, but don't. Days of Future Past didn't have him in the trailer. Yes, they did. Did they really? Days of Future Past? No, Days of Future Past. First class. First class didn't. First class. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't. I don't remember I those know, trailers. That's back in two thousand ten. Um, but yeah, speaking of that scene. Um, Brian Singer was talking to Empire and he said um, 
when he was kind of asked about you know Wolverine's role in the movie, yeah. um, he said it quote fits within canon, um, but that it also what does uh, that mean is quote a birth of a new direction. So very confusing words from Singer, which is not surprising. Um, but my kind of takeaway from this is you see him, he's taking down guards with Cyclops and Jean Grey by for by them right. for some reason. Um, and he has the adamantium claws, so I'm kind of thinking, okay, we know strikers in the movie. We It seems that more and more, um, we'll get to it in a little bit, that Wolverine 3 will be about the Weapon X program in some capacity. Right. Um, so I'm kind of thinking that this mm-hmm. is, they find Wolverine right after he had his, you know, adamantium insurged within him. Um, then he takes out the guards and then he maybe helps him out for a little bit and then he's gone. Yeah. And sounds then, all right. So that's what I think will happen. I don't know. Did you, no, that, what did you think about it? Well, I mean, they've got Josh Hellman back as general striker and mm-hmm. that's right. So obviously there's going to be a quick side plot that them, like for some reason, Jean Grey and Cyclops are going to be at the facility. Yeah. Like, I don't know how, I don't know how you go from, Oh, we have to stop the world from ending everywhere else. So let's go to this secret military base real quick. Yeah. And it looks like there's some like regular attire too. It's just yeah. like, Oh, we stumbled upon this. Right. What? <laughs> how does that happen? <laughs> we we're just driving along and there was a help wanted sign. I don't yeah. know what it was, but, uh, yeah. Is, is this, is this, is this going to tie into the Wolverine I think it's Two probably movie. like set up Wolverine three in some capacity, mm. um, especially if it is what I'm thinking. It is his him getting the adamantium claws. Right. That way, when they show Wolverine three with the adamantium claws, you're just like, oh, okay. But is this it, is how he got them? But don't the original three X Men movies still fit no. into the plot? I don't think so. Because I. Uh, that's confusing because I'm pretty sure Days of Future Past retconned that whole trilogy. But doesn't Brian Singer say that those still happen? He said, like in an interview, like those he, still happen. So I don't know. Man. It's hard to keep track because, like, sometimes he's like, it, he's like, this movie retconned that stuff. But at the same time, he's like, I think in this uh, interview with Empire, he said he's like, it connects the six films together. Yeah. So, so there you unless, go. Unless he's. So yeah, I just don't know. I don't know if Brian C- I'm just, Singer yeah, knows what he's saying. There's so many <laughs> questions I have with the X Men universe and their continuity timeline. Like, I don't even know where Deadpool takes place. Is this Deadpool, Deadpool take place current day? Or does Deadpool take place in like the 90s? <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Like, it takes like, place. Like, like I, I always thought it was present day, but then people argued with me online this past week that's like, oh no, it's actually like uh, in the 80s. I was like, what? I would explain the no because he's got an iPhone and he, he yeah. pulls it out and starts playing it. Yeah, so I don't know, man. If I if I it's, could interview Brian confusing. Singer, I would ask him to yeah. explain. If this I could all have a private me. meeting with him, I'd be like, just okay, just tell me how this all works chronologically, Oof. and I'm sure he'd be like, "We're winging it." <laughs> Gosh dang it! <laughs> if we do a preview episode for uh, oh boy Apocalypse, we should try to at least do to our best of our knowledge piece together what he's thinking. Yeah, that'll be a that'll be a chore. Um, but we'll stick with the X Men franchise a little bit longer. Uh, we talked about Cyclops um, a lot, and it looks like I'm I'm already looking forward to him. I I like Ty Sheridan as an actor, um, and he revealed or EW revealed that he's already signed on for two more X Men mm-hmm. movies um, after this. So. He's definitely not dying, which I would – they if they would have killed off Cyclops <laughs> in this movie, my goodness. The internet would have lost its mind. Um, but I'm excited to see him, um, that he'll be back, whether it's in the next X-Men movie with, and he's part of that Dark Phoenix saga they kind of want to tell or if he's joins the cast of New Mutants um, or whatever the story may be. Um, as long as I – buy him as Cyclops in the movie, yeah. or I'm, I'll be all for this. Yeah, and I don't think they would have signed him to a three-movie contract if they didn't think he was worth it. So it'll be, it's good, at least it, it's not, whatever is happening in this universe, it's nice to see that they have continuity planned going forward. Yeah, you'd hope so. <laughs> so that's that's nice to see. Yeah. Um, and then we talked about Wolverine 3 um, and how you know, it could be kind of uh 
what's this new one? Apocalypse, how it could yeah. be setting up Wolverine 3 possibly. Well, Wolverine 3 added more cast members this week um, with THR uh, revealing that Richard E. Grant has been cast as a mad scientist and Deadline revealed that Stephen Merchant has been cast in an unknown role. Hmm. So two interesting selections. I think Merchant will be kind of like Logan's buddy throughout this journey. Yeah, that's what I thought um, too. And then kind of like the comedic relief. And then uh, since Richard e. Grant's described as a mad scientist, we already we have rumors that X twenty three will appear. We have had rumors that um, Boyd Holbrook will be kind of like this military presence. Like I just think it's 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 Weapon X related. I don't know how. I don't know why, but it seems like that's the story they're going to tell. And it's, like, it's it okay. seems like the send off for the Wolverine character yeah. in, a, in, a, in so many ways with all these people getting ta- you know, tied into mm-hmm. it. So uh, I'm just, there's nothing really to say because we don't know too much yeah. um, outside of just casting rumors. So going forward though, I'm, I'm excited to see it. Yeah. Especially with Hopefully, the rated R yeah. tag. If this is the final Wolverine movie for Hugh Jackman, I just hope it's, the perfect send off for him mm-hmm. and not a muddled mess like <laughs> origins or like a, an okay movie like the Wolverine. Yeah. Like I want it to be a fantastic Wolverine movie. He just gets to do whatever Hugh Jackman wants Wolverine mm-hmm. to do. Similar with how Ron Reynolds could do whatever he wanted with Deadpool and just let, let Hugh Jackman do whatever. Like he's earned it at this point. Totally. Um, just let him do his thing, Fox. Um, well, speaking of people doing their things, right? Um, or not being it, able to yeah. do their things, really. <laughs> it appears DC and their oh, their cinematic ex, it's the expanded DC extended extended universe. extended universe. Yes, um, that uh, it's not going great. Um, Batman vs Superman had not great reviews. No, um, even though it's going to hit around nine hundred million dollars worldwide by the time it um, ends a theatrical run. Um, but this week, the end of this week got hit with a ton of terrible news, um, further universe. Um, and it all started with the Hollywood reporter, um, revealing that Seth Graham Smith has left the flash, um, which he was going to direct. It'd be his first, uh, directorial. It'd be his first, um, time being a director for a movie ever. Yeah. Um, and he's leaving it over, um, what was described as creative differences, Ouch. So, I don't know. I mean, I it's not that I was dying to see Seth Graham Smith um, direct a movie, honestly, until yesterday I didn't know he was directing it. Um, no, yeah, me neither. <laughs> just because I've never heard of the guy. So, this could provide them with a chance to go back to Lord and Miller and be like, hey, we know you guys wrote the script. Please, please, please direct this movie for us. Yeah. They're like, all right. We we can do it somehow, some way. We'll find a way. Um, so I don't know, but it's it's definitely not the it's not great that, no. they, that this would happen. Yeah, it's in movies lose directors all the time. Yeah, but when they leave and cite creative differences, that means there's an agenda at the movie studio and there's no flexibility for it, almost. And uh, I mean, the last movie that we had creative, we heard there were creative differences with the director. Uh, and the studio was Fantastic Four, and we all know what happened there. Well, same thing happened with Ant Man. To be fair, Edgar Wright left over creative differences. Um, the original director for Thor. Well, that was back in like 2010, the, though. Like when they were trying to get the film when, off the when ground. When Edgar Wright it? left? No, Edgar was Wright. It? Edgar Wright left in 2014. Seriously? Or not 2014? Yeah, in 2014, he left. A couple months before the film was scheduled to start shooting. Dang. Um, so then they found Peyton Reed in a pinch, and he did a great job. Um, and he was the one responsible for getting uh, the Falcon in there, actually, um, because he's like, we just need we need something to I get this movie a boost. Um, so it, it's not it's not the end of the world for Flash, but it is definitely unsettling that at this point, and uh, as they continue to try to make these movies, um, that people that they're losing people um, and that this could only be the first of many. It appears um, birth movies, death followed up with this report by saying that James Wan is nervous about directing Aquaman and that he could leave the project as well. Oh, so that's <laughs> okay. not good. No, not when you have two directors that might jump ship. Yeah. Especially cause I, 
Oh, I'm trying to think um, when Aquaman comes out. I believe it. I believe it's 2018. Sounds right. Um, right after Aqu or not right, right after uh, Justice League, um, and then Flash is supposed to come out. I think right after Justice League Part Two, or right before it. So, th if James Wan leaves, that's not good, uh, obviously. And then. Latino View followed up both of these reports by saying that Ezra Miller could leave The Flash as its what? star. What? <laughs> You've already got... Uh, I don't... Like, what do you, What could possibly be happening that makes it all this bad? I don't know. It appear, I mean, yeah, there's been so much reports. I mean, I didn't even include some of them in our, uh, in our, our notes. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you can't... Ezra Miller's already been introduced. Um, he cameoed in BVS very quickly um, as Flash um, from the future. So I said this before we started recording. It'd be very easy to rewrite it. Write it. So oh, that was the Flash from Earth Two from right. an alternate universe where that happened, and you know this actually doesn't happen because somebody else became Flash because of it. Um, but it's. It's not good. I mean, Justice League is supposed to start. Is supposed to be filming right now. I'm not sure if it actually has started. They haven't given out a press release saying, "Oh yeah, Justice mm -hmm. League started filming, guys." Um, but it's supposed to start filming at the beginning of April. Um, but like other stories that came out was like um, uh, Ben Affleck and uh, Jeff Johns, I believe is is the um, other person helping Ben Affleck with his ba uh, Batman movie. I can't remember if that's actually correct or not. Um, but either way, whoever's helping uh, Affleck out, they have full creative control over the movie, so they can do whatever they want with it, which I don't know. I'm not yeah. sure how that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Um, and then there are also reports that uh, there are still execs in Warner Brothers that are fighting to get Zack Snyder off of Justice League. <laughs> so we, we, we talked about this before the, we even saw Batman versus Superman, how they may have just oust him before... Any of this yeah. starts to happen. It's, yeah, it's been very quiet on the DC front um, post BVS, and then just kind of this all happened, um, and it, it sucks. I mean, even though I wasn't the biggest fan of BVS, like I was still excited to see, like I was excited to see Wonder Woman. I'm excited to see Suicide yeah. Squad. And at this point, with each bit of bad news that comes out about the studio and how they're not handling this universe correctly, um, or maybe they're trying to too forcefully handle it right it makes me more and more worried about you know suicide squad and wonder woman even mm -hmm. though i'm so i'm crazy excited for suicide squad but you know those rumors about the reshoots and stuff maybe those are true right um is this movie gonna be like too dark i mean i just Pretty. don't know it's it's just um like i think i tweeted I can't, remember, I can't remember if I tweeted yesterday or what, but um, Warner Brothers continues to give me reasons to doubt them and yeah. what they're doing with their universe, and they've yet to give me reason to be confident and like, okay, like I'm on board. Besides Ben Affleck as Batman, that's the only thing I'd be like, do whatever, I'm like, I'm yeah, all for this. absolutely. And this is the, the thing about this is I'm okay with these more grim, serious type movies, but... The, when you have production issues at, at this grand scale, and I know that it's going to be hard fought for you to bring any of this to the screen, like people are diving overboard and that, that sucks. Like if there's no joy in the production phase of it, then what's the point of putting it on the screen for me, like for me to enjoy? Yeah. And, and like, like when Marvel, when Mar I don't mean to make this comparison, but when Marvel or Star Wars movies are being cranked out, the the production and the lead up to the Force Awakens, um, to Civil War has been nothing but just fun. I thought yeah. I, I felt feel. fun and positivity. Yeah, and to see that DC's having these issues where they're making serious movies, but it looks like it's all you know with whips and sticks. Uh, oh, I don't know if I really want to care about them. Yeah, yeah. it's it's not a good place to be um, for Warner Brothers. And um, as a movie fan um, and somebody that wants to be a fan of what they're doing, um, it's hard to do that. Um, and I know a long time ago we talked about, you know, if Zack Snyder was booted, would George Miller step in? Cause he's producing the movie. Would he step in and direct it? Um, 
and a rumor came out this week that um, from Heroic Hollywood that he's being looked at to direct Green Lantern Corps instead. Hmm. Um, this was followed up by Ain't It Cool News. They said this is report is quote bogus. Um, and he's been, but I mean, Miller's been linked to DC in the past uh, to do Man of Steel 2 for a long time. Um, I can't picture George Miller doing this movie. No. Um, I'm not even sure if I want him to at this point. Not because I, I don't know. I'm just not sure how Mad Max Fury Road translates to, to Green Lantern. Yeah, it one is going to one hit one was a cinematic masterpiece, and with there was a combination of a bit of you know graphic visual CGI, but most of it was done mm-hmm. in Australia. Was it shot in Australia? Ooh. But anyway, it was all it was it was like the Revenant almost, you know, yeah. a lot of natural elements to that. And then for him to make the jump over to something that's probably going to be heavily CGI'd, oh, yeah. uh, not he could, probably can't do it. But you know, like I would rather see George Miller put his talent somewhere else. Yeah, I would have if they announced it. I'd be like, okay, I'm I I have faith in George Miller to do it correctly. Definitely. But would I rather him do another Mad Max movie, like a Furiosa movie? Heck yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Uh, so who knows what's going to happen with uh, DC. We have uh, like five months now until Suicide Squad. Four months? August, right? May, June. So yeah, four months. Yep. Um, so oh, I hope this movie's good. I really want it to be great. Because, I mean, and if it's... The weird thing is, if it's great, then... And these rumors keep popping up about all this other stuff. Will they just be like, okay, screw the schedule we've announced. Suicide Squad 2 starts production tomorrow. Right. And then go ahead and, and then push the Batman film forward too. Yeah. And then all we'll do is just, we'll just have, they'll kind of, I feel like they could just scrap everything and just do a Batman Suicide Squad thing where it's like every Batman movie is him fighting two of the Suicide Squad members. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of the trilogy, this other threat comes and he has to you yeah, know, they, be like, okay, put aside their evil differences. For Suicide Squad, you guys got to help me out here because this guy's going to destroy the whole world. Mm-hmm. And they're like, all right, but if we do it, you got to let us go. And then he's <laughs> yeah. like, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thoughts, so, thoughts and feelings with DC for now though. Yes. Uh, we are very, we're hopeful they can figure it out. Um, get everything squared away. Um, and at this point, a lot of that stuff we just talked about is just rumors. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, James Wan could still stick on uh, with Aquaman. Ezra Miller could stay with Flash. Hopefully he does. Um, and for all we know, Flash could get a incredible director to replace um, J.J. Uh, Abrams. Smith. What? <laughs> <laughs> probably not. No, but. probably not. Um, but now we're going to turn away from DC and go to Marvel as they have this little movie coming out called Captain America Civil War next week. Oh, is that this week? What? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's crazy. Um, and we're gonna, just going to talk about our, kind of our expectations for the movie. Um, Josh has some questions he's going to ask me, and I will. I promise not to spoil anything. Oh, they're not questions. They're just a series of swear words for you <laughs> seeing the movie already. No, but yeah, I'm dig into what we... Well, this is almost this is gonna be interesting because you already know what yeah, you think. Yeah. So basically, my approach to this because we were already planning on doing a preview episode before the movie came out, anyways. Before I found out I could see the movie early, um, so I'm going to take my approach as if I hadn't seen the movie because um, I still remember all the stuff I thought would happen. Yeah. Um, and conversations leading up to the movie. So I'm going to be relaying those thoughts. Some of those may have come true. Some of them not. Who knows? Okay. Oh, well, I guess I do, but yeah. you guys don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair point. Yeah. So, what what are you expecting to see in Captain America: Civil War? I'm I'm expecting them to throw every superhero that they have so far at each other in one grand battle, almost like Transformers for Marvel. You know? Okay. <laughs> That's the worst comparison. <laughs> I know I've it is, heard. but think about it. All all it is is like massive chaos and destruction, and and that's what I'm. That's why I'm. That's my expectation for the centerpiece of this movie is they're battling. And I'm not saying that 
it meets it's near that in any way, but I'm expecting it to be like this is going to be the most the greatest fight scenes that you've ever seen from superheroes to date. Uh, I I also expect with the Russo brothers that there's going to be a very heartfelt story about the friendships of Captain America and Tony and Bucky and Cap. So I want that 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 is the underlying theme and the overarching. Come see this movie is you get to go see Ant Man and Hawkeye and Scarlet Witch go toe to toe with War Machine, Black Panther, um, Vision, and Tony. Yeah. So that's that's my expectations. Okay. Uh, I expect to love it. I have I have a. Ticket stub, early grading of 4.5. Okay. I'm betting it'll go to a 5, but I don't know yet. I hope so. Yeah, I think it will. Um, also, obviously, Spider-Man. I want to fall in love with Spider-Man in this movie. I want to be excited for the standalone movie, Spider-Man Homecoming. I already am. So I, <laughs> there's so much pre-built, uh, pre-built love and excitement but I just need it to have I need to have all my excitement validified. Will that mm-hmm. happen? Do you think? Will that happen? That's a great question. You, yes. Um, I think your expectations are um, fairly placed. Okay. Um, with a good chance of them being met. Um, I had the highest of expectations this um, your... for this movie. This is my number one movie of the year. Yeah. Um, I went into it thinking I'd give it a five. Um, and because I'm a huge fan of Captain America, um, he's been my favorite superhero for as long as I can remember. Um, I loved the Winter Soldier. I loved what the Russo brothers did with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just so invested at this point in this universe that I was so excited to see what they would do when they throw these characters against each other. Um, and so I was very excited to see what you said, the relationships and how they... Um, go against each other especially with the various insides um i mean the main conflict is obviously between tony and steve um that's kind of been built up throughout the years but yeah. then you know on uh, on opposite sides of each team you know you have black widow on one team you have hawkeye best friends going up against each other you have scarlet witch and vision you have who are very close um they kind of that love interest kind of sp- like hinted at um in, what? Age, in age of ultron I never caught any of that. Well, it's like, okay. Well, I mean, it, it's 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 a big reach, I guess. From there's it, a it's, there's a connection. I thought it's it's from. I never thought love. Well, I mean, that's based off the comics, I guess. Okay. Um, just knowing they oh, that's they, right. they fall in love, get married, somehow have kids. Yeah, he's much more um, human in that, isn't he? Uh, he's <laughs> yeah. He, I mean, he's he has a human. Uh, re, he's basically a reprogrammed human, kind of. Right. I um, think of him as like a robot. So yeah, I don't know how that would happen and <laughs> how they would explain <laughs> that uh in yeah. a movie but um yeah you've got which envision on opposite sides um you have uh who else is there then you have you know the best friends of each of the leads on opposite sides like right. falcon and war machine both mm-hmm. military men um oh, one right. former one current um and then uh i mean you have you have Bucky and Ant Man on Team Cap, um, going up against you know newcomer Black Panther, who I was you know so excited to see because I was a big fan of Chadwick Boseman. Um, so I mean, I mean, I just had the highest expectations for this movie. Um, in every way, I was um, expecting to love it. I was expecting the story to be phenomenal. I was expecting the there to be a twist at some point um i was expecting uh, people to die i was expecting you know, a whole bunch of stuff to happen okay when all that stuff happened i'm not gonna say okay um but i mean i had so much expectations built up to love it and i had i did the same thing with age of ultron and age of ultron let me down i let everyone down yeah really. so it's i i was i was weary that that could happen again with this um and it didn't as far as I'm concerned. Sweet. So um, going into the movie stuff I was worried about, however, I was worried about the, the amount of characters. Um, yeah, there's 
because there's 12 superheroes in mm-hmm. the movie. Um, I was a little worried about how they would include Spider-Man. Um, just because there were a lot of rumors about, okay, was he included last second or what happened? He cut out Black Panther's time. Um, Stuff like that. I know you didn't like when they showed him in the trailer initially. You didn't yeah, want to see yeah, him. Yeah, I didn't want to see him at all. Um, was that is that okay now though? When you think back to it, was yeah, that a good it, way was, to it was probably okay. There? All um, right. Would it have been better to see it for the first minute theater? Absolutely. Okay. Um, sure. Anything with I mean, there's still Spider Man stuff popping up for TV spot stuff that I refuse to watch because I want to see it in the theater more and more instead of on a iPhone or a yeah, computer screen definitely. or something. Um, but, uh, I was, yeah, I was worried that, you know, he kind of, he could be thrown into the story. And I was also worried that, um, there are, um, Marvel's already announced this, not a spoiler that, uh, Daniel Bruhl is playing Baron Zemo. Um, and Frank Grill is returning as crossbones for the movie and yeah. they're both villains. And so I was, I was worried how they would play into the story because I really wanted to see, you know, Iron Man and Cap. Um, and that became an even bigger worry of mine after BVS because of how influential Lex Luthor was with getting Batman Superman in his fight. I was like, oh. Is someone going to be pulling the strings? I was, like, I, was like, I was like, please, please don't make them fight because they don't want to. Right. Like, don't make one of the villains be like, okay, you guys have to fight, otherwise this guy dies or something. Sure. It's like, there needs to be, they need to have their own interpersonal um, feelings as why they want to fight. If somebody pulls a string and that unleashes those emotions, I'd be okay with that. Yeah. But I didn't want someone to be like, hey, we kidnapped your mom. Uh, <laughs> go, go fight this guy that's like killer yeah. type thing. So um, those were the worries. What, what are the worries of you heading into the movie if you have any? Mm. All right. Well, my I think my biggest worry is how they parcel out the, the two and a half hours. Is it going to be a lot of is it going to be a lot of political a lot of political stuff to get work us all the way up to the the grand finale, which is what looks like takes place at the airport. Um, like you said, uh, is there in the previews we we see the general whose name I don't know Thunderbolt Ross Thunderbolt Ross that's an awesome name well, Thunderbolt's his nickname his real his, his real name's Thaddeus <laughs> okay <laughs> but he's he's in the boardroom and it and it reminded me of Robert Redford's role um, in Winter Soldier I'm like mm. oh is he is he gonna lie to everybody and that's why Tony and Cap are fighting like. Uh, like you kind of like you said, was there going to be some manipulation that you're just like, yeah, I don't buy it, not not a single bit. But then the more I thought about the conflicts that Tony and Cap have, especially with their conversation that they have at the farmhouse in Age of Ultron, uh, it made me feel a little bit better about it. So that that, again, though, that, that was my biggest worry. Um, but I I real I, I really just need to see this now right. finally. Uh, I'll, okay, I do have one other worry. Mm-hmm. You can answer this one. It's not okay. going to be spoiler. All right, you ready? Yes. How is Martin Freeman? How is Martin Freeman? Good, great, not so great. He is. He is good. He is. He's already publicly said that he's. He is being set up for more. Ooh. So, that's. Not a spoiler as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Um, well, yeah, he's attached so to Black Panther, isn't he? I, if you go and expect him to be in this movie a lot, no, I just you'll want, be disappointed. <laughs> is, is, my, is my 30 seconds of him all right? I mean, yeah, he's good in what he's in. Okay. It's not like he's in it and I'm blown away <laughs> by what happens um, I have or what he notes. does. But, yeah, I mean, Martin Freeman's a good addition. Um, you know, yeah, this the movie does have a lot of pieces you know, working together, people meeting each other, um, people being in there quickly, longer, you know. So they have, there's a lot of people, uh, carries that have to work together. Um, do they all work? Maybe. Uh, yeah. You have to find out for yourself. Was the, um, well, was there any, did you, when they introduce, I don't know if you can talk about this or not, when they introduce um, Black Panther, mm-hmm. is it in a natural way? Yeah. Is it, really organic or does it feel to, like it's kind of out of the left field i don't know if you can answer that i was gonna ask a question but i don't know if i want to um 
but his introduction is very natural. Okay. Um, it's it's not like, hey, you. <laughs> Wait, why are you standing right there? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> They're so, in the lineup at the airfield yeah. that they show in the trailers. It pans out. They all turn left. Yeah. What? <laughs> Who are you? Uh, I don't know. I just I saw a gathering of people. <laughs> yeah. I have a costume, so I, I came <laughs> to join. Thought I yeah. Just thought I would stand here. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> what What are you most excited about? I, um, I I'm, if, you could, if you could name one thing, Spider Man. Spider Man. Okay. Absolutely. He's. I've. Have I mentioned that he's my favorite Marvel character? I'm pretty sure I have. Yeah. Uh, the, seeing him come back into what looks like the true character of Spider Man, uh, it just looks great. Mm-hmm. And knowing that he's going to be right alongside my other favorite, Tony, um, Iron Man. It's. Oh, that that's what I'm excited for. Mm. And you could Yeah, you could have gotten me to this movie one saying Spider Man will pop up in this movie if you go and show me nothing else and yeah. I would be there. See, and that's why I didn't want them to show him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just, well <laughs> just people knowing that Spider Man's in it alone will get people in the seats that yeah. maybe would not have um previously. So um but it's okay. I'm okay with it. Um now um now you have some questions you wanna ask. I think. Um, And as you do, I will answer them as best I can. But once again, I will not spoil a single part of the movie. Yeah. Um, Okay. I think I kind of touched on a couple of them during, during our conversation a little bit ago. But one of the ones I have is, is this, if you can or can't answer this, is this sort of like a Iron Man three situation where everything is built up as the, the battle between the Mandarin and Tony, and then you come to find out that uh, actually this is a battle between Tony and some other guy, and everything else was a facade. So you want to know if like it, a J.J. Abrams Star it's, Trek two. So you want to know if the trailers are actually depictive of what the movie's actually about? Yeah, are they representative? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's your interpretation of the trailer, um, but. If you're Mike, okay, but this Captain America and Tony think too differently on two things. Captain America does something that can't be undone, and they have to fight. Or yes, yeah, something something like that. Yeah, okay. Um, and then I guess I just have it's two and a half hour movie. Yes, it's it's going to be a marathon. Um, is it? Divide it up well enough that I never get to the point where I'm going to go put my hand on my face and kind of tilt my head while there's people gathered around a boardroom talking about uh, the significance of the <laughs> taxation <laughs> of the trade routes or something like that. Um, it's a Star Wars episode one So reference. yes, it is, it is two and a half hours long. It's, it is a long movie. Um, I will tell you that it felt way shorter than two and a half hours. Okay, um, good. I felt like it could have been, it could have been another half an hour and I would have been yeah. okay with it. Um, Star Wars episode seven situation. Yeah. Not that because it's like, wait, what? Ha-? Like I need these questions answered. It's just like, I just wanted to see more. Right. Um, so, um, but at the same time, it's like, there's, there's so much, there's, they have the perfect amount of stuff in there. So I don't mm-hmm. know if I didn't want to see more or not. Yeah. So it's like, it's real confusing. Um, but yeah, I would say, uh, screen time is very evenly. I mean, it's distributed the way you kind of expect, Okay. Um, Cap has a lot to do in this movie. Same with Tony. Um, Bucky's a big player, uh, obviously. Um, and then the rest of the characters, like, you know, like uh, Black Widow has a fair amount of screen time. Vision Scarlet Witch has a fair amount of screen time. Um, the rest of them are they're, they're have their they have their sh- they have their screen time. Some of them have a lot less screen time, um, but they all have. You know, even if they're only in there for smaller portions, they have significant um, parts to play. You never feel like uh, there's a cut to a scene and you're like, what was the point of that? Yeah. Does it all yeah. feel cohesive? There's, there was never a point for me, at least, where I was watching the movie and I was like, okay, like, yeah, you're cool. I like you as a character, but I want to get back to this other point. Right. Like, take me back here. It's like, it's like I was no, I was just like locked in and engaged in what was happening the whole movie. Um, and normally when something would cut um i'd be like wait i want to see more of that <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> um, okay good and, but then you'd go to the next scene like oh i like this scene. okay yeah. i like this scene too sweet so 
I think, yeah, it works. It worked really well together. And I think the Russos um, just continue to knock it out of the park with their Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. um, And uh, just gives me even more confidence in them doing Infinity War Part 1 and 2 to see what they'll do with that. I think it's going to be incredible. Well, I think that wraps up my questions. Okay. Because everything had, else was kind of answered throughout our conversation. Yeah, you had one other one. Um, uh, is it like, is it a true sequel? Oh, I do have that one on there. Um, which I'll answer by saying yes. Um, it very much, you could watch, um, you could not watch Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, except for some references to Age of Ultron, um, well, animated is called the Sokovia Accords. Um, right. Right you would feel like, okay, I didn't miss that much. Right. So, I mean, Age of Ultron is still a big player um, because it's kind of the thing that sets the Sokovia Accords in motion and everything. But at the same time, um, this is definitely a, a continuation of the Cap and Bucky storyline. And then to another de- to another degree, it's the continuation of the um, juxtapo- juxtaposo- juxtaposition. Yes, thank That's you. That's an awesome word. I love uh, that word between Tony and cap and you know, the, the way they think. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I would say it's definitely a sequel to winter soldier. That's, Uh, that's pretty sweet too. All right. How about this? As a follow up question, is it ideologically, is, does this movie, um, follow the same path that Batman versus Superman tried to get across in, in the idea of that, if there were superheroes out there, do they need to be controlled? Is that kind of like the thing? Is that the theme, like action versus inaction? And yeah, well, I mean, like for the previous 12 Marvel movies, right. um, there's been a very positive reception to superheroes. Mm-hmm. Um, even though they have caused mass amounts of destruction, they have saved, our, they've saved the planet multiple times. I mean, people are very thankful of that obviously because they're still alive yeah um but this movie definitely deals with okay you guys do protect us but there's lots of you know fallout from that that's not that you guys don't take any responsibility for really yeah kind of Um, alluded to in age of ultron with the stark uh relief funds and things like that that he kind of says real quick um there's i mean it's definitely about yeah I'm losing my train of thought. Um, it's definitely about superheroes. Yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> uh, but it's definitely, I mean, it's about how the world sees them um, and how the world wants to see them sure, um, and kind of control them. And then it's up to the characters to real, to, you know, determine, okay, do I want, do I want to be true to myself? Or do I want to continue to help people, but maybe I have to, um, go back a little bit and fall under this regime right. that maybe I don't totally believe in. Mm-hmm. So um, it raises a lot of um, great personal conflict, not only between other people as they express their points. Yeah, I mean, there's a point in the movie where people are just talking about the chords and what it could mean. And it's probably 10 minutes, maybe less. Um, but it's just them. It's all of them talking about how they feel. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's great um, back and forth um, between everybody. Um, and you see it in that they're not only dealing with, okay, like, no, you need to see my point of view because I'm right. It's, am I right? Sure. It's like, they're all listing kind of being, Oh, yeah. that's a good point. That's a good point too. But I mean, but I, my point's also pretty good. Totally. So it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, a fun adventure to go on cool the movie are you team cap or team iron man i'm team iron man are you I've got spider-man on the team no but if from from an ideological perspective, I, from an ideological perspective i think what tony's from what i understand tony's position is is restraint and then uniform action does that seem fair uh yeah okay i i think that's a great perspective to have and not only in the movie with superheroes, but sort of today, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, I was uh, I was Team Cap heading in um, because um, I'm obviously a big fan of the character, but sure. also 
he his stance is a lot more personal where it's okay like i i enjoy and i like helping people Mm -hmm. but i'm not going to uh compromise who i am um i'm not going to change who i am to fit within this system um and i really like that um approach um and he is very much um adamant on sticking to that throughout the movie hmm well, the only way I'll be able to know if my <laughs> I my my view going in is accurate is to see this. Yes. And let's see. By the time you're hearing this, it'll be two days. Two days. Yeah. Uh, we can end. We'll do a speculation. Uh, okay. Similar. Um, way back when we did our Star Wars Seven um, preview um, with on our pilot our podcast debut. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, we talked about, I believe we talked about if anybody would die in Star Wars 7. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, without getting into spoilers okay. for the movie, I will tell you who I thought was going to die Okay. in the movie. Sure. Um, and we can talk about who would die at the end. And then there's also a point in the trailer where they show War Machine being mm-hmm. shot out of the sky. I did not think that he would die at that point. Heading into the movie. Yeah. And then also heading in, I was under the belief that somebody would die somebody else would die throughout the movie i didn't know who um i was based on the comic book that it's based off of i was um leaning towards um captain america dying yeah. um just because of how it plays out and then he could be brought back to fight thanos and everything definitely and, um but i was also i was like but they could switch it up get robert Downey jr out of his contract kill him off um but I was definitely more leaning towards Cap dying at the end and then War Machine not dying because I didn't think they would actually show that in the trailer. Mm-hmm. So did you think? do you think War Machine will die and do you think anybody else will die throughout the progression of the movie? I went ahead and from the look that Tony Stark gave in the trailer, I went ahead and said War Machine's dead and then I was going to go on and follow the comic book lore and think Captain America's dead too. Okay. And that's how the movie would end. And no one, and then also Vision would be done away with okay. as well in some capacity. You think he'll just be, he'll just be dead or he'll just leave? Something or? like an Odin sleep where he's like in okay. a coma okay. and no one knows how to wake him up or no one wants to wake him up because he's actually like super powerful too. Mm-hmm. Like if he's like the Hulk, like Hulk's not around. We're not going to go find him uh, yeah. <laughs> to fight in this. So that, I mean, I really thought they would get away, get rid of a couple players um, now. So you're, so you're post civil war. The Avengers are without cap. Cause he's dead. Right. Um, without war machine. Cause he's dead. And mm-hmm. vision is hibernating. Do you think there's anybody else um, that will, of all the heroes that are in the movie, of all the heroes, do you think there's anybody that leaves the movie that is not an active Avenger? That leaves? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So, like personally, like I, 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 I think thought, Jeremy Renner's gonna, or not Jeremy Renner, Hawkeye is gonna finally he'll, he'll, throw the bow down too. Because okay. I mean, we got a glimpse of like he doesn't really, he's he's too old for this stuff, you know, <laughs> yeah. in Age of Ultron. So he wants to go back to his farmhouse. And if he dies, oh, I would, I'll probably be, I'll probably be most upset if he dies. Yeah, I was uh, I was also thinking that Spider Man not being a full fledged Avenger by the end of this movie, mm-hmm. um, that he would he would help, um, and yeah. then Tony be like, okay, kid, yeah, go my card, go go back, <laughs> go back to New York and do your thing, <laughs> right? Um, I'll call you if I need you type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would mean your Avenger lineup heading into. The next, throughout the rest of this phase is, yeah. well, okay, does Iron Man come back to be an Avenger? Because he is technically retired. Yeah, that's true. He just drives off in the sunset. Yeah, I think he comes back so, in some kind of capacity. So is he, he's, he's, the, he's the new leader? Yeah, or just like, you know, he's the liaison to mm. superheroes for the Pentagon or okay. something like that. So then you have, you have Black Widow sticking on yeah, as Black, an Avenger. Black Panther, Black Widow, Iron Man. Um, um, do you have Scarlet Witch? Scarlet Witch still. On? Um, Ant Man. Yeah, I, f- I feel like Ant Man's got to align himself now. Um, are we missing anybody else? You killed off War Machine, Cap. Mm-hmm. Vision's asleep. Spidey's back in New York. 
Falcon, obviously, oh, yeah. he's gonna ah. Falcon, see an Avenger. I feel like he'd be too ticked off that Cap would be dead, so I feel like he would just disappear too. What about Bucky? Is he the same boat? I feel like Bucky's nowhere to be found at the end of the movie. Okay, um, so that's that's all twelve, yeah. I believe. So, and I feel like that opens the door for them to start hunting down new people to replace the ones that mm-hmm. they've lost because it gives room for Doctor Strange to exactly. be an Avenger. Um, the Guardians in a few years can come in. Um, so yeah, I think that's uh, that'd be a very um, tough lineup. Yeah, because, well, because the the threat the threats on Earth are basically eliminated, you know, quote for quote, and they won't need a full ensemble until yeah. Thanos starts dropping mm-hmm. dropping in on them. So yeah, I think that's a that's a good um, good rational thinking right there. Well, to see. Well, I don't know if you're right or not. Yeah. Well, we, you can find out in a couple of days. I can't tell from the look you're giving me if you're <laughs> oh, right or good. not. That's good. I'm trying to give my best poker face. Yeah. Um, but that is going to be the end of this episode. During our time away, be sure to tell us your thoughts on everything we covered by tweeting us at Friends and Film. We receive updates on the podcast, movie news, and more. You can follow me uh, personally on Twitter at Coops underscore Hoops. And uh, you can, before the, subs- the next episode comes out, I will have a full length um, written review for Civil War up on mcuexchange.com as so you can find it there. Um, and I'm sure I'll tweet it out on either my uh, personal Twitter account or my other Twitter account, Cooper at MCUEX. Or if you're watching on YouTube, probably in the link in the description below. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can do that. Um, and if you're interested to know what I'm up to watching or talking about on Twitter, you can follow me at Straley Strong. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening to this on YouTube, SoundCloud, or iTunes, please subscribe, like, share, give us a thumbs up. Um, and if you are on iTunes or if you're not, um, you should head over there uh, real quick. Give us a five-star review um, to really help us um, just continue to be more re- uh, relevant mm-hmm. and more people can find us. Um, you can spread the joy of this podcast, hopefully. Um, thanks again for tuning in to the Friends of Home podcast. Josh? Hey, thanks for stopping by, Internet. I'll see you guys soon. And as always, be sure to watch some new movies before we return next week with a review of the highly anticipated Captain America Civil War.